Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this new figure unboxing and review we're going to be looking at the Transformers Rise of the Beasts Deluxe Class Air Rays figure. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to unbox her live in a second, have a look at the entire contents of the packaging. We're then going to have a detailed look at it in both of her modes to help you decide how you want to display her. We're then going to do some comparisons with this particular version of Air Razor and the Kingdom one and I believe the moulds are incredibly similar so we're going to be able to have a look at that. We can also see how she displays with some of the other Rise of the Beast figures, but these are the ones from the Studio Series toy line. And I suppose also just to give you an idea of just how big she is, we can see how she compares to some of the standard Hasbro uh, deluxe figures that are out there. The core class and indeed some of the third party scaled figures as well, just to give you an overall idea of how big she is right so i'm actually really excited to have a look at this figure um i purchased it from smith's i went in there and they just had an absolute abundance of rise of the beast figures it looks like they're out everywhere and um i didn't have much money in here but this is the one i really wanted to, to have a look at because this is the one i just love the look of this alternate mode so when all these pictures were leaked and everything all them months ago this is the one that i really really liked and i've got the studio series one on pre-order as well but this one i think just looks incredible so i can't wait uh, to crack her open to be honest but let's have a look at the new packaging so we've got the signs obviously of the maximals there we've got air razor coming around in alternate mode there the reason why i've got alternate mode on the front is because she's in robot there there's the lovely rise of the beasts logo six plus for this um and yeah there we go to looks class not much more on this to be honest there's no qr codes by the looks of it to scan um and as i say this is my complete first impressions and first experience of a rise of the beasts figure to be honest uh they've started i say main line the studio series they've obviously released a few weeks beforehand so again it's interesting to see these for exactly that reason right so i think i've just cut up the instructions looking at that i always take them from the bottom just because it's a bit easier so because it's a mainline figure there's obviously no uh, backdrop like a studio series figure she's all tied in relatively nicely there there's the two blade accessories there's the instruction so this is yeah this is the new color scheme that i've seen a few times in a few pictures what i need to do now then is set her free from there and come right back to you right then so i've just set her free from her packaging and it's time for some first impressions and actually this looks slightly different to the kingdom version i'll have to have obviously a much more detailed look in a second but as first impressions go i'm quite surprised at again there is quite a few differences which are glaring straight away like the hands like the back of the legs there um but i really really love this color scheme i think it works incredible the head sculpt for me is spectacular the eyes you know they really they look like they're glowing but obviously they're not they look that good it's on a mushroom peg is it yeah or ball and sockets so you've got full articulation there the shoulders ball and sockets so all the way around to the side you've got bicep you've got shoulder swivel you've got bicep flexion you've got wrist is it going to swivel no it's um it comes up and it, it's got like a wrist flexion there as well which is crazy you've got no waist swivel but you've got hips um on they look like ball and sockets but i'm not sure no they're not but you've got full articulation of them to the side to the front you've got a hip swivel at the top you've got a knee bend you've got an ankle tilt no rock by the looks of this um that looks to be quite few well fused to be honest uh, the paint scheme on this though is what i really like i like the way some of it looks reflective some of it's just like a normal matte color we've just about got a maximal can you make that out there the maximal lo maximal logo in the front there um this also is again if you think it looks familiar this is the same version that's going to be in the jungle mission three pack but obviously this is just her released by herself there's some beautiful detail there around about the midsection um and yeah that looks like we've got it was that an ab crunch no not really it's it's it might do actually yeah but i think that's mainly due to transformation um again we're going to do some more detailed comparisons in a second and there are the two blades but before we do the comparisons what we're going to do we're going to have a quick look at her inner alternate mode then come back and have a look at her inner robot do all the poses and do all the comparisons 
Okay, so here she is in her alternate mode. Quick apologies for no transformation process on this video. Couple of reasons. One is to keep the main length of this video down. And two is with it being a new figure, I didn't want to spoil it for anybody who didn't want it spoiling for themselves. And this also gives me a great opportunity now as well to completely correct myself and apologize at the beginning. This is nothing to do with this mold at all. Although they look very similar. And again, we'll do some more comparisons when we're back in robot mode. The transformation process is so, so much different and it is a completely different mold in fact i much much prefer this i love this and again i said it in the first part just look at the detail in here and all the feathers and the crazy thing is as well these are the legs that from when he was in robot mode um as i say i will be uploading a transformation tutorial as well if you want to see that um articulation wise you can see we've got full articulation i suppose at the ankles or the feet at the rear at the back there you can't really do anything with the waist you can lift the tail feathers up at the back and you've got a lovely fade there it starts off darker and gets a bit lighter as you come out um there's no in fact unfortunately there's no real swivel here uh, as far as articulation goes in the burn mode it is super basic the head's fused unless however you just separate that off there which doesn't look too detrimental you can then turn her head left to right which again doesn't look too bad the only time it looks really bad is if you start to hinge it forward and then of course that just looks awful but it should actually be clipped back into position there. But that just makes it a little bit too... Well, it depends how you're displaying it, to be honest. But have a look at the head here as well. We've got the lovely detail in the eyes. We've got all the bits of uh, like the robots underneath, like the endoskeleton or the mechanoid parts, all coming through, showing through on the sides. That is, in fact, her head from the robot mode. It just really, really works. And it works really well. And again, just a reminder, this is just a normal mainline figure. It's not the Studio Series version. We've got the blades, and these can actually be kept and stored underneath as well like so so different to i say the figures that i suppose we used to there's no real five millimeter ports apart from in the hands there by the looks of it they look a bit bigger actually but you know there's nothing you can really attach to it and i suppose nor would you want to it's not it's not really looking at that that's not the angle it's going for um it's it's a nice little ulti mode i say i think it looks really good and you can see that you can really pose these legs around to give her different angles so when she's up in this mode she's still she's still quite big there's a core class grimlock um i've got a core i've got a legend scale dive bomb here which is a completely different price range and a completely different uh thing but it gives you an idea of i suppose how big that she is um but yeah for a nice little standard deluxe figure she, i think she looks great so what we're going to do now then we're going to come back for the final time with her in a robot mode do some more comparisons see how she looks with the blades etc and yeah let's have a look at it like that okay then back for the final time with her in a robot mode and again this is exactly how she should be displayed differently to how she was when we took her out of the box initially because of course we had the orientation of the feet that well the claws the wrong way around whereas obviously they should have been just hidden behind the forearms they don't go fully behind but they go enough to disguise the fact that they're there what we can then do as well in a second is we can have a look at a wither accessories but i'm just working out with this i mean you can really choose how you want her to have these wings to be honest that looks pretty good you can have them behind tucked away like that which to be honest i don't really like it does make her look really straight you know streamlined etc maybe a bit at the back like that not like that i think definitely at the back slightly angled coming up is the pro well it's my favorite look for her shall we say so we've got these which are of course the blades and then these will fit in the hands and this is good because this is going to i suppose disguise or cover up some of the fact that we can see them falcon claws again not too detrimental i don't want to be too harsh on this figure because it is just a standard mainline figure it's not the studio series version uh, but i don't want there to be too much of a glaring you know difference you know i don't need to be a sort of you get what you pay for thing which it is a little bit the other thing to point out about this is to be honest again for a mainline figure apart from maybe these little bits here look there's hardly any gaps i mean obviously there's a gap there for that to go in but it's it's not glaring it's not huge these do come out of it i think the blades just top this figure off really really well there's even detail into the mold in there which you can see um 
everything as i say i'm really impressed with this you can move the shoulder pads up and down as well as with the arms they do tend to move a little bit more for the transformation process which again will be uploaded in a separate tutorial video for those who do want to see it i'm just quite clearly really impressed with this figure and again so surprised i really did think that they'd just gone and pretty much used this mold so let's have a look at how different she is you can tell it's the same character that's the clever thing you can really tell it's the same character same attributes same sort of you know features but um yeah totally different mold totally different transformation process just very very clever and i suppose as silly as it sounds that's a transformer at the end of the day isn't it it's something that you know it it looks like something that it's not and i'm just very impressed with that it sort of reminds me of the clones from generation one uh, for those of you who know what they are uh, the clues in the title uh, what they were they were two pretty much identical robots but they had very different alternate modes and although this is obviously this they're the same things i just think because they look so similar and so strikingly the same that it's really interesting that they've got very different transformation processes right let's do some comparisons while we're here then for those who are interested there's a core class standard figure that's obviously an old kingdom figure this is a more recent deluxe figure shall we say um, if you're wondering and you collect G1, there is a G1 Hot Rods, which is, again, a little bit bigger. Um, if you collect Legend Scale from different companies, there's a New Age. And there, indeed, is a Magic Square, who's just about fitting in. I'm going to do a Kang Toys comparison, obviously, because the fact that it is a Falcon. And I know that Dive Bomb's slightly different, and we've just seen him in falcon mode but there is kang toys for Mini, which again this is a third party much more expensive figure but looks spectacular and they look really good together to be fair they do look very good together right but what we want to see is let's see her with some of the rise of the beasts characters but before we very quickly do that just to give you an idea of scale and size again totally different movie i understand that you've got bumblebee movie rc and bumblebee um, and then we've got Battle Trap, who of course is Studio Series, hence why the more detailed. And of course he's Voyager, hence why he's bigger. We've got Cheetor Studio Series, again more detailed. Um, and indeed that quite a bit bigger. Um, I think that's pretty much... Oh no, we've got RC here as well. We've got Core Class RC, who scales in quite neatly. Um, and I think that's probably just about it for the comparisons with regards to these. Tell a lie. I was, this is what I was trying to find. There he is. There's Core Class Freezer as well. So although all these are Studio Series and she's not, you can see that she fits in perfectly, to be honest, with these. And I'm just going to get him to stand. And I'm pretty much going to, as I say, end the video there. So if you want to see any videos on the remainders of these, they're all separately uploaded. Um, the transformation process tutorial for her as well will be separately uploaded. Um, let me know what you think. I think these figures, as I say, studio series I'm impressed with. Mainline I'm impressed with. It looks like they are really making good strides with these new toy lines with regards to the new film. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Take care.